Hi, welcome to everyone who's just dialing in. Um, we're going to just leave it a few more minutes um, to wait on other people. But um, yep, sit tight and we'll we'll be ready soon. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone who's dialing in. Um, we're just going to give it maybe one or two more minutes to let a few more people dial in, and then we'll be starting off our session for the day. So thanks for your patience. Kia ora and welcome everyone to today's LexisNexis Innovation Panel Interactive Workshop on the Agile Lawyer. Uh, my name is Pippa Marson and I'm a product developer for LexisNexis. Uh, just before I hand over to our um, moderator today, I have a few housekeeping matters to cover. Um, uh, all of the attendees have been set up as muted um, on entry, but you can contribute and we really encourage you to do so. Um, so you'll have to use the chat function to do that. So we'll be monitoring chat um, and any of the things that you raise there will be directed to panelists during the session. Um, today's event will be recorded um, and notes about the discussions will be made and we'll distribute those around to attendees after the event. Uh, there will also be a pop-up survey after the event. So please do let us know how you found today's session and then help us improve and ensure that these sessions are valuable to you. So thanks. 
Um, now, let me introduce Sophie Marsh, who is our Head of Product and Customer Discovery here at LexisNexis. Sophie's been with the LexisNexis business for a number of years in both New Zealand and the United Kingdom, and she's been a driving force behind the establishment of the LexisNexis Innovation Panel and LexisNexis New Zealand's Discovery Strategy, ensuring that customers are the focus of our content and product development. Uh, Sophie will be moderating our event today, so over to you, Sophie. Thank you. Thanks, Pippa. Um, tēnā koutou katoa, no mai hāri mai, and welcome to this LexisNexis Innovation Panel Virtual Workshop on the rise of the Agile Lawyer in Aotearoa. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. So as Pippa mentioned, my name is Sophie Marsh and I'm the Head of Product and Customer Discover Discovery here at LexisNexis New Zealand, and I'll be hosting today's discussion. The LexisNexis Innovation Panel was launched last year with the intention of collaborating on legal technology innovation with New Zealand's legal professionals. So today is the second in a series of group innovation workshops um, and future group workshops will be interactive and focused on legal technology themes and upcoming LexisNexis features and development, developments. We'll also be inviting our innovation panel members to participate in ongoing user research activities relevant to them as and when these arise. And I'll speak more about how you can join up to be part of the panel at the end of today's session. So please stay tuned. So um, we have a jam packed agenda for today. Um, during the course of this lunchtime quarter though, we'll be exploring what the concept of agile work means when it applied to the practice of law. Uh, we'll also be posing questions to the audience via interactive polls throughout the session, so please do keep an eye out for those. Um, there'll be a Q&A session at the end, so we do invite you to send through any questions or comments using the comments function throughout the hour, and we'll endeavour to get to as many of those as possible. And to close out our session today, my colleague Lindsay O'Connor, who is the Head of Local on Online Solutions, will be giving us a demo of a um, exciting new automation drafting tool in development and asking for your feedback on that. So we're delighted to have here with us today a panel of experts from legal practice and legal tech who are all at the centre of the conversation about agile legal practice in Aotearoa and beyond. So without further ado, I will introduce our panel. Kirsten Graham is litigation pa partner at Cavill Leach. Kirsten co-led Cavill Leach's digital office committee, which transitioned the firm to an electronic work environment. She's passionate about finding efficiencies in legal practice through technology and has recently mastered the electronic casebook to utilize in courtroom presentations. So welcome, Kirsten. Christine King is our next panelist. She's the director at, a director at Duncan King Law, specializing in property, commercial and trust law. She's led her team in moving towards agile work processes, starting at small scale and growing organically through the firm. And we're delighted to have you here today. So welcome, Christine. And uh, Michelle Webbsono is a Practical Guidance Senior Legal Writer uh, for Corporations at LexisNexis in Australia. Michelle came to LexisNexis from commercial practice and has enjoyed seeing agile work in play every day at LexisNexis. Welcome, Michelle. Um, and welcome to all our panelists. Thank you for joining us today. So we're now going to kick off with our first interactive poll um, that I believe should be appearing on your screen shortly. And we're keen to hear as part of that poll where you are at on your journey to agile working. Um, so hopefully you can see that on your screen now. And we should start to see uh, results of that coming through in just a second. We'll just leave it open for another few moments while people get in their answers. Excellent. And how are we going with that, Pippa? Are we starting to see the results of that poll coming through? Yeah, it's starting to look good. We've got 78% uh, of our attendees have voted. Um, so I might close that one off now, actually. I think we've got some good results here. I'm just sharing those with everybody now. Fantastic. So it looks like um, the largest proportion of respondents have said 
um, that they're not sure necessarily what Agile is and that's why they're here today. So that's fantastic. We're going to be starting off with um, a definition. So hopefully that answers the question for you along with the discussion today. Um, then we've got 26% who say that they have a general idea but need to know more before applying Agile. And the same percentage say they've implemented but are looking to improve or widen the scope. Um, and then 15% of our respondents say that Agile is fully embedded in pockets of their business, which is fantastic to hear. So really keen to hear from, um, from all of you about, about those experiences. Um, and nobody is in the position of the business being entirely built around Agile business model at this stage. So excellent, that's really good to know. Thank you so much for um, participating in that poll and that will be useful for our first point of panel discussion. Um, but before I get to that, I'm aware that um, there are obviously people on the call today who haven't come across the concept of Agile before. So to kick off the session, I'm going to begin with a high level definition of what Agile means. So Agile methodology is a way of working that started um, in software companies, very much kind of Silicon Valley um, uh, sort of inception of, of the concept and has expanded to all sorts of businesses. And Agile advocates for adaptive planning, continual improvement and flexible responses to change. So one of the biggest concepts that are central to Agile working is iterative experimentation and being open to learning through um, what's called fast failures and continuous refinement. Um, it can be small or it can be large. And we're going to hear today about from um, our panelists about uh, their experiences of implementing Agile within legal practice. So without further ado, I will um, start that discussion with our panelists. So I'm keen to hear um, about our panelists' experience working with Agile methodologies and how these have been applied in your work. So Christine, perhaps we could start with you. Um, sure. Hi. <laughs> Hi, hey, thanks for having me here today, just as a beginning point. Um, I always think it's really important to understand experiences and, and sort of framed in almost how we got to where we are now. So if you bear with me for a couple of seconds, I'll just quickly explain. So uh, when I actually joined my firm, and this is over 20 years ago, so you, you know I'm a little bit older, um, I actually was the first ever female lawyer hired by the firm. Um, and a lot of um, the, the structures and staffing and methodologies around work Work, were focused towards male lawyers um, and one of the things I did find and this is you know a little bit of a boohoo moment um, but a lot of uh, the support staff the secretaries just didn't know what to do with a female lawyer um, so I found that often uh, they wouldn't do my typing or they would put my typing to the to the back of the the tape bin you know remember these old um, things when we used to have dictaphones um, and I have to say I think um, I learned from that experience and I, I found myself working really long hours because I was trying to do do a lot of my own work um, that the secretaries wouldn't do, but also realised that my work and a lot of the secretaries' work at times seemed really super inefficient. There was a lot mm. of repetitive tasks. Um, and I think it was almost like a little bit of a, a Scarlett O'Hara moment, if you bear with a, a gone with the wind ref. Um, <laughs> but I kind of thought, you know, we could do this better. And if I ever get my, my chance to, to run a firm, I'd like to do it better. So that was my inspiration. I, I went into it thinking, you know, I don't want my staff working re really long hours or treated mm -hmm. poorly. Um, so I think in a funny way, whilst I didn't appreciate it could be linked to um, the agile methodology, um, we ended up... Um, almost falling into it organically or, or could we say accidentally um, when you kind of think the base of agile is about generating more value faster that's exactly what we've done but certainly from my perspective we've focused on it from if you're talking about a you know um, a user experience your ux i looked at it more from a staff perspective so how could i improve uh, the working through the firm to improve the the lifestyle and enjoyment for my staff while they're actually in the office so getting them through their tasks but faster so what does that actually mean in practice what well, actually means a range of all different things um 
So it could be something like breaking down um, a task and working out um, those sort of rub points uh, where you're constantly doing the same thing mm. or you seem to be inputting the same data and then thinking, you know, why does it need to be three discrete steps when I could maybe use a precedent and some automation to turn it into one? So, um, and it's, it's been interesting. So it, it could be a work type, um, but actually it could also be um, a work um, aspect within the firm like an admin function we just actually had a bit of a stand up before about how we're dealing with deeds uh, and then we've come to um, a little bit of a solution with a squad elected a leader um, and now we're going to run out with and test it because we're appreciating with agile that sometimes it doesn't work but uh, you know trying out this new way of dealing with our deeds with the idea that it should streamline improve the process and maybe also improve the experience for my staff and, and get rid of those sort of hassle times. Yeah, brilliant. And I think those are um, similar pain points that we, you know, that we probably all experience, but um, interesting to hear how you're um, tackling those. So thank you. Um, Kirsten, has it been a similar journey for you in your, in your work? Yeah, in some ways. So, um, so our firm... Um, definitely started heavily paper-based that we've been around since the 1920s and I think in recent years um, there's been a real shift to running a more paperless digital office um, particularly after the Christchurch earthquakes when we were sort of cut off from systems and things and our paper files so really had to find different ways of working um, and I guess over time we have really learned to maximize um, our practice management software um, and I think from an agile point of view, that's really come into play within our firm. And since about 2017, um, when we had an external provider come in, and in terms of our experience of working with agile, we've used that um, sort of for bigger picture projects, more so than client day-to-day um, -day work. But it's really meant that we've been able to um, progress some of these bigger picture projects which often fall by the wayside mm. um, and yeah so we've had a, a real um, a, a great uptake across the firm we've involved people at all levels in the firm and I think that that's really helped to um, establish good buy-in. Mm. Yeah and I'm interesting that you mention the Christchurch earthquakes as being a bit of a catalyst to start looking at these things because I think probably likewise COVID has been um, mm. a similar catalyst um, uh, you know, worldwide, really, um, um, to kind of kick these things into gear, especially in the legal industry. Thank you. Um, Michelle, and a slightly different experience probably for you, but interesting to, to hear about your experiences um, with Agile moving from practice to uh, LexisNexis. Thanks, Sophie. So I should probably start by saying that my exposure to Agile and project management strategies generally started when I studied computer science at university. So um, sort of neatly in a box, it sort of starts all in the tech context for me. When I moved um, to practicing law um, in Australia, and I've been in a big firm, a small firm, and in government, uh, I really found that my exposure to project management and whether you even heard the word agile really depended on your partner and your team. And looking back, you know, I can definitely see elements of agile in everything we did when we ran matters and transactions, but it was definitely unspoken and not particularly mm. consistent or cohesive. And you certainly didn't really get a lot of formal training around it. You picked it up as you went. Um, and then so, sort of somewhat ironically in my current role in as a senior legal writer at LexisNexis, I see a really strong interest and focus in effective project management, innovation, mm -hmm. agile to get effective results. So last year um, I used agile uh, to build an electronic signing tool to, for transaction lawyers. And um, I guess the tool itself is an example of innovating and trying to automate things that we find, um, you know, it's an, another pain point, I suppose, um, mm -hmm. and that our senior leadership team uses Kanban. So uh, it's very much part of the culture of, uh, being here, um, sort of trying to innovate and move and adapt. Mm. Yeah, and I think um, an interesting point that you raised there is that um, agile can be something um, as small as, as one step, 
you know, a signing step, um, but and it can also encompass, encompass the whole way that a business works, like um, Kanban, which you mentioned, which we won't go into detail um, because we probably don't have time here, but um, for those interested, um, happy to send out some information about that afterwards. It's, it's kind of a, a, a way of um, approaching projects across the business. So um, I think what's interesting is the scale of, of Agile and how that can be applied um, you know, from a starting point and, and then growing bigger. So thank you panelists for all your thoughts there. Um, we'll now jump into our second poll. So that should appear on screen in a second. Um, we're interested to hear from attendees what you see the biggest challenges are to implementing HR work methods in your organization. Um, so it will leave that open for a minute or so to get those uh, insights in. We really need some background music while we're doing this, but I won't provide that. <laughs> I won't sing. I don't think anyone wants to hear that. <laughs> Chariots of fire, perhaps. Yeah, yeah something like that. <laughs> So Pepper, let us know when we're starting to see those. Um, Just a few more ticking through. Okay, great. I think we've reached a point now. Cora, uh, excellent. So I'm just going to end that off. And here are our results for you. Okay, interesting. All right, so um, the largest percentage of people are saying that a lack of agile expertise within the business is the biggest challenge. And um, yeah, I can certainly sympathize with that. It's difficult when um, it's sort of the blind leading the blind or it can feel like that. Um, we've also got a couple of other themes coming through. So a limited understanding of what agile means. Um, a lack of executive level support for agile methodology, um, and then coming through on smaller smaller level as existing client billing structure um, and the organisational structure. Um, uh, so, if you have selected other, um, please do feel free to put that in the in the comments, and we can pick up on that in our Q and A. Um, but interesting insights there. So, thank you for attendees for participating in that. Um, and following on from that poll question, I'm now interested to hear from our panelists about some of the challenges that you faced and overcome in interest, introducing agile methodologies to your work. Um, and whether you've got any advice for practitioners or indeed um, other people involved in the legal industry looking to do the same in their organization. So um, Kirsten, perhaps we could begin with you. Certainly. Um... In my opinion, I think the, one of the biggest challenges we faced was staff buy-in, and mm -hmm. that was particularly so with some of the more old-school practitioners that we have on the team. Um, so that can certainly be challenging, and also maintaining that buy-in throughout. So there were a couple of different things that certainly helped with this through our transition to Agile. Um, the first was obviously providing some training to staff and mm. some recognition for that time that it takes to come up to speed on all of that um, and the ongoing, um, I guess, commitment on a time and a fee basis uh, that these team members are putting in to um, work with Agile. Um, another thing that was really helpful was involving people who were really passionate about uh, making change and were effectively cheerleaders for change um, mm. across the firm as well. So we weren't just dealing with one small um, group or age group within the firm. And I think the last thing that really helped us was implementing um, almost like auditors across the firm so that we had people who were kind of checking in and seeing, well, are you sticking with um, the things that we've been trained on? And maybe if there's um, better ways of doing things, we we make changes to keep that buy-in and keep the momentum going. Mm. Um, and yeah, all of that has really helped to um, establishing that establishing agile as a, a permanent part of how we do things now in the firm. Yeah, that's really interesting that you mentioned that that buy-in. I think that's and you know obviously that's coming through in the poll as well. It's um it's difficult if you if you're one person to try and uh, 
affect some of these changes. So um, yeah, some of the some of the things that you strategies that you've talked about there sound like they've been really useful in your firm. Um, Michelle, do you have any thoughts on, on challenges that you face? Yeah, so I have, definitely have to agree with that comment about buy-in. Mm. Um, I also really think maybe it's more so in Australia than in New Zealand, but there's um, sort of marked lack of understanding about what agile means and how it can apply in the law. I think people mm. believe it um, belongs much more in the um, IT context. And I wonder if, because part of it is that um, the teaching should probably begin at university when we're studying mm. law, but it's, you know, the focus is more on what the law is rather than practical issues about how you practice it. And then that continues when you're a junior lawyer because you are busy reacting to instructions as opposed to taking a step back and thinking what, you know, how can we do this better? Um, so I suppose the solution for that would be what Kirsten's done in her firm, which is to have more training so that it becomes a bit more embedded part of the culture of the firm. It's something that you do and something that you talk about. Um, and, I, and I think that it's really important because I was surprised to find out um, when I came to practice that actually as a lawyer, I'm a project manager and we're all project managers mm. need the tools to do it. And um, having training would certainly help that. Mm. Yeah, no, I think, I think, um, I think you're absolutely right. And I think really interesting point you raised there about legal education and, and the part that legal educators have to play in um, looking at some of these things as well. If any, I mean, it's an, it's an interesting discussion point. Um, actually, we had uh, Wayne Rumbles on our last panel discussion, who is very interested in, in bringing innovation practices into legal education in New Zealand. But um, certainly, it's 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 just starting off, I think. So very interesting to hear that feedback. Um, Christine, how about you? What what kind of challenges have, have you um, faced in your journey? I have to say, I'm, I am going to run with the, the buy-in theme. I think yeah. my, note, my notes here, I put the complainers. Um, the complainers. Like, <laughs> yeah, because you know there's always someone in the firm, whether it's to your face or behind your back, and they're, you know, grumbling around the water cooler, oh, this is, you know, silly, why would we do this? It works mm. fine, you know what I mean? So, um, and that can really erode, I guess, the positive energy of, of what you're trying to um, achieve. So certainly one of the ways we have approached the complainers, as we like to call them, is we've actually turned our complainers um, almost into our cheerleaders, okay? Mm. So this isn't just about mental manipulation, but maybe it is. <laughs> uh, maybe we should use this on our kids at home. So first, it was kind of grabbing those complainers one on one, and I guess trying to see, get them to see the why. Sort of. Mm. So I'd always start with, you know, oh gosh, isn't it annoying that you have to, you know, do this five times in a day? Or what are you finding annoying? So we're we're really kind of connecting on a um, a personal level um, in terms of me caring about them and. Um, their work life um, but then getting to talk to them about maybe if we did this you know in an ideal world wouldn't it be amazing if if it could do this um, and often what we find is the the biggest complainers they almost like click really hard into um, feeling like it's all about them it's probably mm. why they're a complainer in the first place um, and they often end up being your biggest cheerleaders and I've also then usually taken it a step further and got them to um, almost like grab the the process because again one of the the other challenges is almost being overwhelmed like this, mm, this mm. agile thing is trying not to to bite off more than you can and just taking it down into discrete tasks and then allocating that complainer to be almost like your your leader so they're going to run it so it might say hey in a really simple level do you hate this precedent and they're like oh the tone is terrible and it's really clunky how you have to make these selections and then I'll go oh my gosh I would love to get your feedback how would you change it to to make it great and then can we run it past the rest of the group because we'd always have quite a few people in terms of you know checks and balances so mm. Definitely a process like that. Our complainers were a bit of a problem. Um, the other thing which we have struggled with um, is sometimes completion. Uh, and mm. what I mean by that is um, I'm, I'm at times a bit of an ideas person. I get really pumped and I'm like wanting to do 20 things at once. Um, one of the best things for me in the office is having people around me who are a little bit, I, I guess, calmer <laughs> and who, who kind of like take me down a level and, and really force me to um, work on these little discrete tasks or we might have so many allocated across some groups, but not moving on to anything else until they're actually done. 
Mm. Um, and what we've also found with Agile, um, and I guess it's it's the framework around it, a lot of these things, once you achieve it once, it can actually be rolled out and repeated with other tasks quite quickly. So sometimes the learning is at the beginning uh, and then it's the ease into the replication of, of the task. So yeah, so my top three is uh, turn your complainers into cheerleaders, um, you know, don't take off, uh, you know, don't try to take on, you know, too much at one time. Um, and then also focus on completion, not just inception. Mm, yeah, such such good advice there. And I think I think um, actually the interesting thing about agile is is, is you are often encouraged to um, uh, to be looking at lots of different solutions, but it is the completion that is the I guess the hardest part, but the most important part as well, just to actually see the benefits of this stuff. So. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and I also really like the idea of turning the complainers into cheerleaders. I think that's great. <laughs> um, fantastic. All right. Well, thanks so much. It's um, now time for our third polling question, uh, which will hopefully be appearing shortly. So we're interested to hear what you see as the biggest opportunity um, stemming from a move to agile work practices would be. Um, so feel free to enter your feedback in there and um, again if you if you're choosing other then please feel free to um, put in uh, further information if you'd like to in the chat box and we can have a look at that thank you Just got a few more trickling through. Maybe Wonderful. There. It's looking to be some quite clear responses in this one. So I'm just going to close that off now. Should be sharing with you all. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, again, a couple of really key thing, themes. So the highest rated opportunity is a first step towards automating the boring stuff. Um, so very much on the theme of what our panelists have been saying as well. Um, improved client experience is the second highest, which I think, um, you know, is really interesting kind of looking at that external facing as well as internal facing benefits. Um, Providing a better work-life balance for staff. Uh, and I know Christine spoke about that directly. So that's that's interesting to see that coming through. Uh, and then kind of lower down the scale, we've got improving staff expertise for te technological future. And a couple of people have clicked other. So please feel free to put um, in the comments function there if you'd like to provide further information there. But um, yeah, interesting, interesting that that by and large it's automating the boring stuff, which I think is absolutely a huge benefit of moving um, towards these sorts of methodologies. So thank you everybody for participating in that. All right, so leading on from that polling question, my final question for the panelists is what benefits or opportunity that, that you've seen in your work um, that's come from using agile methodologies. And particularly I'm interested in hearing about any benefits that were perhaps a nice surprise as part of the process. Um, so Michelle, maybe I could start with you. Um, thanks, Sophie. So I guess to answer this question, I probably would draw on the best experience I've had using Agile, which was um, at LexisNexis when um, we developed uh, an electronic signing tool for the practical guidance product that we've got. So we had a tool developer who did all the techie stuff and, um, and then the two um, ex-lawyers, myself and another person who gave the legal input into it. So the particular benefit um, that came from using Agile is, you, you know how with Agile, one of the principles is frequently delivering something that works, mm -hmm. um, doing it early on. So we had a really ambitious project plan and a launch date that was fast approaching and we ran into some trouble getting the tool to work in a particular context. So we made a late decision to carve out that part of, of the tool, but we still ended up with a perfectly good working tool to deliver at the end of it. And this is, I truly believe, because we used Agile, which mm -hmm. meant at the end of every sprint, 
our goal was to always have one signing method that worked. Every sprint resulted in that signing method. So you built the tool in layers and it was always working. And I strongly suspect that if we had used a traditional waterfall method, that that wouldn't have happened. Mm. Um, it also meant that there was no wasted work, which I think is really important when you don't have a lot of resources. Um, we had daily stand-ups to ensure that we're all on the right page and could reprioritize if necessary um, and could re stay very flexible and always adapt to um, feedback when we were stress testing and validating um, what we were working on. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think that that was a little bit of a surprise, I suppose, for me in terms of going getting to the end and thinking we actually had something that we could deliver and doing it with a reasonable amount of ease, actually. Mm. Um, but just to sort of go slightly off, off topic, just looking at the um, choices that you had on that poll, um, with, it, it reminded me of one of the interesting questions that came up when I was in practice um, with automation. And uh, the small smaller firm that I worked at was looking to using software with AI to do mm. diligence. And this is, again, automating one of those really boring tasks, but it raised a whole bunch of interesting issues, including billing in particular. And I think that probably encouraged more of a move towards project billing. So whether that's a benefit or opportunity, I guess it might depend um, which side you're on, um, but I just thought that was an interesting um, development. Yeah, definitely. It, um a lot of this automation stuff has quite interesting impact on on billing um and I'm definitely here, interested to hear from Kirsten and Christine about whether they've experienced any of that um but thank you Michelle I think a really interesting um point you make there is about the kind of con continual iteration um you know part of agile and possibly that's something that uh in, with a traditional viewpoint doesn't sit particularly um, competi competitively with, with, with law. But mm -hmm. as we know, there are so many aspects to law that are, that are repetitive tasks that, you know, that something like looking at automation really does apply to um, and, and leaving time for the more substantive legal considerations. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Christine, we'll go to you next. Thing. So it was one of these things, like I said in the beginning, we really focused on moving into an agile methodology more to improve um, the work-life balance for our staff um, and their mm. UX. Um, but what I was really surprised about is um, how much it improved actually our profitability. So mm. that's probably what lawyers in the audience are quite interested in as well. I mean, it kind of makes sense because, you know, you're more efficient, you're, you're time saving. So those repetitive tasks are, are, are maybe combined or, or reduced, but we were also eliminating mistakes um, in terms of, um, you know, re-inputting of, of data into the system. So we've seen a direct um, correlation to using the agile methodologies um, and our, our bottom line, it's been, it's been particularly exciting. Mm. Um, but also for, I think as well for me, um, it does mean that I can actually supervise more staff with security and consistency. And what I mean by that is because we've taken uh, these thoughts out to um, even micro analyzing all of the usual comms that we would have on a, a standard transaction, I've got a little bit more certainty that the, the right documentation is going out at the right time, but mm. it's also got the tone that I want to uh, project into terms of um, you know my firm and the experience I want clients to have there um, so for me definitely more profitable uh, the ability to supervise more staff um, it also from a workflow point of view means I can quite easily see where people are up to and the certainty um, but keep in mind it's it's not a static process um, mm. we're constantly reviewing these things improving upgrading getting feedback from not only our staff and clients um, but trying to almost like like improve that experience and um, the way our you know our processes work so it's, it's been a really refreshing thing for me to really look at my firm and not just be a lawyer but mm. see how my my staff work how and how we interact with clients so across the board some really big benefits mm. yeah excellent thank you and I, and and again interesting to hear that there are benefits not only uh, from an inter internal efficiency point of view, but also 
you know, as you mentioned with client, client relationships as well, I think that's, that's really interesting and something perhaps that people don't necessarily think of straight away when they think of the benefits of Agile. So thank you. Um, and Kirsten, how about you? Any, any kind of unexpected benefits that you saw in, in the implementation of your Agile methodologies? Yeah, um, I guess the one of the unexpected benefits that I think we've all we will all agree on is that it's been really great for our culture mm. um, it, because I guess it's really encouraged a lot of collaboration and communication across our entire team um, by involving people at all levels within the firm in our agile scrum teams. Um, yeah, I guess it's provided a really good framework for attacking some of these um, non-client related work projects that need to be done at some point or um, there might have been someone that noticed something that um, like a really old system that is in desperate need of um, a rethink to try and make things more efficient but often those things get left to one side whereas our agile teams have allowed us to pick those jobs up and find ways mm -hmm. through um, and tick off those kind of annoying jobs but also the ones that seemed almost to always go in the too hard basket um, so we've had some really interesting policies and things that have arisen out of our agile teams um, examples of things like we've developed our flexible working policy um, address for your day policy which was all part of our innovation scrum team um, and we had a lot of input from a um, range of team members on that and it kind of helped I guess share the load so mm. that was a really nice um, fallout from using agile in our firm um, Another benefit I think we've all experienced is how easy it was to continue with the Agile process even while we're working remotely during COVID. So um, we were using some, I guess, online bulletin board type um, programs to capture our progress with the, the scrum teams and our sprints. And yeah, during COVID, it was easy to, to maintain that, although the progression of those were kind of halted as we were, everyone was working out um, our new normal. Mm. Um, but yeah, this, it's a really great tool, I think. Um, and it can be applied in so many different ways. Mm. Yeah. And, and I mean, a um, couple of points there, I think that are interesting. One is you, you kind of mentioned the, the fact that everybody from all levels are, is involved in, in the scrum teams. And I know that classically a scrum kind of removes the hierarchy within an organization. So I think that's that's an interesting um, part of the experience, particularly in a law firm that does tend to be quite hierarchical. Mm. Um, and the other point I thought was interesting was just you briefly mentioned there one of the remote working tools. Um, it sounds like perhaps a whiteboard tool or something that, that you were using as part of um, the remote working. And I think it would be quite interesting um, to hear from all the panels, actually, if the, uh, panel members, if um, there's been any particular pieces of software or online tools that you've found useful as part of the implementation of Agile. Um, so I'll, qu I'll just quickly go to each of you, but then perhaps if, um, we can share them in the, in the comments um, afterwards as well or, or share them with panel members because I know um, probably attendees will be interested to hear about that so um, Christine maybe I'll go to you first. Sure so um, obviously I'm just going to put my hand up we're affinity users mm -hmm. um, so one of the, actually the best things um, was um, the ability in affinity to um, quite easily set up our president library um, and then all the um, the document sharing provisions under you know each matter um, but we've also got um, matters set up specifically for these admin kind of agile tasks where everybody mm. can see everything um, we also use Microsoft Teams um, not just for video calls guys um, there's a, <laughs> a lot of other functionality there um, in terms of um, sharing and getting people to collaborate on documents but I, I guess my message is because I know um, a lot of people are really daunted thinking you've got to have the, the the best greatest tool um, to be honest if, you, if you're finding that's a struggle and you just want to collaborate on a document it can be as simple as people um, emailing around a word document and tracking their changes you know what I mean the idea is the collaboration mm. rather than getting too wound up and in, in what tool you've got yeah it's a really good point there I think yeah um, Michelle any 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 particular tools that you 
recommend? Um, so I have to agree with Christine. It doesn't have to be a very fancy tool. We used Teams and that one, mm. and also plain old emails just back and forth with, you know, appropriate version controls, obviously. Um, but also we use Asana. I don't know if that's mm-hmm. um, well known, but um, I, we found that really, really good for managing projects. And I use that as my Kanban board as well for my own, for my own day-to-day things. Um, and it looks great. Right. And Kirsten, how about you? Um, so our practice management software is Infinity. We do mm. um, now use Microsoft Teams and SharePoint a lot. Mm. Um, prior to us getting on to that, there was a free app I think that we were using called Trello, which was mm. quite handy just as a sort of online bulletin bulletin board. I think it's free um, and it's quite a nice visual. Um, but now we've replicated that over with the Microsoft products and that seems mm. to be working well. Yeah, and I mean, from my perspective, um, again, we use Teams a lot, um, and uh, we use a lot of the add-in widgets that you can that you can mm-hmm. use. That I think a lot of them are freely available, and and um, things like the planner board we find really useful for kind of tracking backlogs. Um, and then another couple of useful uh, online tools that we use include Miro, which is an online whiteboard t- um, tool, which we found really useful, particularly, well, in lockdown, but actually we've continued using it for kind of um, brainstorming sessions and things like process mapping. Um, so Miro is a good one to look up. Um, trying to think if there's any else, if there's any other ones, we will send them through, but I think that's a good start. And I think a really good point from everybody that it doesn't need to be something fancy and it doesn't need to necessarily um meet every single requirement I think you can you can kind of do a lot with a little um with some of these tools um so thank you everybody for that um all right well we've reached the point now where we have time for some Q and A um so thank you panelists for those incredibly valuable contributions um and thank you also everybody for your uh contributions to the polling um questions we had um i'll ask now if there are any questions from our audience um i don't know if pippa if you've had it seen any come through already um have there been any come through otherwise i'll ask ask now for people to put them um, in there's a few comments um more than than questions but a few people sharing uh tools that they use as well we've had someone um commenting that microsoft planner is a really effective tool for them mm. for tracking tasks mm. as well um, yeah. because you can sign them and put due dates and things like that i have a question here come through um for the panel um what has what have been the most impactful tech changes that you have made um shall i start off with christine <laughs> Thanks. Sorry to throw you in, <laughs> throw you in the deep end. <laughs> no, that's all right. In terms of tech changes, um, I think actually one of the biggest impact changes was actually more of a mindset shift with some of our old staff, mm. uh, older rather than old. That was very rude. Um, now, what it was when we were heading into COVID, um, you know, they were really just freaking out about this idea of, of working remotely and not having paper mm. files. Um, and so one of the biggest shifts was actually training them to use our system properly because quite unfortunately we'd probably been letting them I guess ride on old habits Mm. Um, and the look of absolute joy on some of my staff members face because they're like this is amazing I had no idea that the system could do this it's it's quite magic you know what I mean and so Mm. um, it wasn't that we changed our system it was more I guess in some ways we trusted our staff but also our staff um probably because they were forced to be, were open to um, learning. And since then, some of our staff who in the past, you know, wouldn't have touched, you know, barely their own computer, now are, you know, some of our biggest cheerleaders in terms of trying to embrace, um, you know, greater change. So, that, you know, that's mm. a big shift for us. Yeah. Um, I've got another question here um, that kind of leads on from 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 what you've been saying there. So um, from the panelists experience with the implementation of agile what are your most effective methods for communicating progress with all the project staff on projects or scrum teams to ensure that everyone's on the same page and knows what's going on so I guess to pick up on your on your point Christine about communication there um Kirsten how have you how have you find the best the best way for communicating progress within the firm 
I think that's a work in progress for us as well. Yeah. Um, we are looking at different ways of doing that. One, we have, um, I guess, access to all of the different um, project teams, uh, for lack of a better word, bulletin boards. So people mm. can see if they're interested to see how the different sprints and things are going. Um, but we also tend to try and update all staff quarterly on what the different project teams are up to. Um, we also have had, we've got sort of overarching uh, leadership teams which are involved in the process as well. So they're able to pick up on if there's any overlaps between teams and um, that sort of thing. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right, we've probably just got quick uh, time for, for this last question. So I'll throw it over to any of you. Um, the question is, what software would you recommend for preparing very large bundles of documents, auto generation of table of contents, etc.? Do any of you have experience in in using um, software for that kind of document bundle preparation? I have some experience in terms of court bundles, if that mm -hmm. um, if that translates across. We have Adobe Acrobat Pro DC, and that's a huge help. Um, but I'm pretty confident that when it comes to table of contents that we're manually hyperlinking. So we haven't quite nailed that yet. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and I guess with a lot of these things, um, probably it, it is an iterative process. I mean, as we were mentioning, software often gets us so far and then we, and then we kind of iterate and find the best, um, the best way forward from there. So um, any other um, closing thoughts before we move on to Lindsay's product demo that anybody would like to share? Well, if I can make a, a quick comment, I get a lot of people um, approaching us and sort of asking, you know, what we use to automate our precedents and, and you know, lots of queries about how we've, we've, we've managed to create our library and automate it. Um, I think the main message for me is maybe stop looking for tag on products as mm. a, a quick fix. Um, mm. I kind of think that um, most of the practice management, the good solutions in the market now, they're kind of like the human brain for most firms. You're only using a tiny portion of them. Mm. Uh, and you might find that the system you've got can actually do what you want it to do. You just don't know how to make it work. Um, so for us, certainly, um, we've been on this, uh, I guess, a, a journey with LexisNexis to try and find out as much as possible how to get the best out of the system we've got. Mm. And it has mean that, you know, for us, we've got people um, internally who are, are scripting, but there's also um, the assistance we do have from LexisNexis in terms of, um, you know, when we're looking for something a little bit niche or bespoke or a little bit difficult. So, guys, don't overlook. You might actually already have the solution um, at work in front of you. Beautiful plug there. Thank you, Christy. Right. <laughs> I'm not paid for that. It's all good. Um, hey, well, thank you so much, um, again, panellists, for all those um, thoughts. Um, it's been really valuable uh, for me personally, and I hope for everybody else to hear your insights. So thank you. Um, all right, so we are now going to, I'm going to pass over to Lindsay, who's going to do a bit of a um, demo of an automated drafting tool that we've got in development. And then from there, I'll wrap up. So I will pass over to Lindsay now. Thanks, Sophie. Uh, kia ora, everyone. Thank you, especially to our panelists. That was a really interesting discussion and really fascinating for me to see how some of these concepts that are very familiar to those of us in the tech world are making their way through to law firms. So that was um, really interesting. Thanks also, Christine, because you couldn't have given me a better introduction to what I'm going to share with everybody today. So that was perfect timing. So what I have to share with you today is a sneak peek at um, our new product that is going to be coming to the market later this year. Um, it's a product that is already in market in the UK. It was released there in May this year, and they've had fabulous feedback about it so far. So we're keen to give you a little bit of an advanced preview of what's coming down the line. So this product is called Lexus Create. It is an end-to-end -end drafting workflow tool. Um, and it's been developed based on around 100 customer interviews in the UK around how lawyers were actually dealing with drafting of documents and all the various issues that go with that in practice and what we could do to solve some of those pain points. 
Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to dive straight into some of the features and functionality. We're going to have much more information um, coming further down the track, so look out for this. This really is our kind of first chance to talk to you, but there'll be much more coming in the following months. Create's designed really around a three-stage process. So we have the build phase where you're actually pulling together your document, check, which is your sort of proofreading stage, and then a complete stage, which is everything you may need to do with the document before you get it ready to send to the other side or file of course or whatever you need to do with that document. The first feature I'm going to show you is um, mainly due to some of the feedback that's come up in today's session around automation um, and also some of the issues people have discussed to do with precedents in particular um, and compiling a precedent library. So within our build function in Create, we have a content um, feature which actually enables our users to build their own precedent databases at either a document or specifically a clause level. Um, so what I'm showing you here is quite a basic sale and purchase agreement. You can see that I've highlighted one of the clauses within this um, agreement. And what we can choose to do with that content is to add it into a precedent database. Now that precedent database can be something that we choose to use just for our own purposes. Um, so that's your, your snippets, or it's actually something that we can use to compile a firm wide or a department wide um, database as well to enable collaboration um, between, between teams or between individuals within your business. We've also enabled users to build into that process a workflow, uh, which enables approval requests to be sent to designated people within the firm. So that could be somebody like a knowledge manager, or it might be the partner within your department who would then provide approval for that clause or document to be added into the database um, before that is actually done. You also have some features here where you can annotate um, around what this document actually is. Um, and you're also able to tag it, for example, we're set up here to tag via practice area so that you can um, make it really easy to find for people within your firm. Once snippets are added into the database, we then enable users to search across it. So you can restrict that search just to your own or to any snippets that have been shared within your department or firm. Coming next year, so um, as we've been discussing today, Agile, we develop all of our products here um, in Pacific on an Agile basis. So whilst there'll be an initial release of this product coming later this year, our phase two to follow next year will be exciting because that's going to involve an element of integration with our, exact, um, our existing practical guidance content so that users will, from within the Word environment, be able to search across that content, find documents um, or content that is of interest and then easily insert that into their document. Moving swiftly on in the interest of time to our um, check stage, which will be an area where many of you will be familiar with other kind of document drafting tools. This is a kind of proofreading type tool which enables you to see um, any inaccuracies, inconsistencies that there may be within your document. So here we're looking at things like definition issues where terms uh, may or may not have been defined properly or they may have been used before they've been defined. So it will easily pull up a list of any of the issues within your document and then enables you to select um, what you need to do to actually rectify that issue. We also have a citations checking tool and this will comb through your document. Um, it will find any, in this case, legislative references within our sale and purchase agreement, let you know the status based on our Lexus advanced status flags, and then also enable you, for example, to replace that with the full legislative title um, or case name indeed, if you wish to do so. Other areas in here that we'll pick up on are things like cross references, if they are being used inaccurately enables you to complete it, and also a new feature added by the UK team around inclusive language and the ability to easily change that. Our complete phase is the final stage for you to choose what you want to do with your document before it potentially get sent elsewhere or indeed stored into your precedent library. And this gives you a few options of um, tools which help to make tasks that can often be quite time consuming or tricky um, to be made much easier and also do risk them. So the first feature we have is a redaction tool, 
which enables you to redact any sensitive or personal information from a document before, for example, that might be sent to the other side or indeed saved within your precedent database. We also have a reporting feature which generates a report based on whatever you've done within this document while you've been using create um, so you can see what changes have been made that is quite useful if you're sending your document internally for somebody else to review they can kind of review it run create over it and then send the report back so very useful if there's for example junior lawyers reporting into a partner on their drafting our finalized step is designed to remove any of the hidden bookmarks our product uses to improve performance and navigation. So that just cleans out the metadata before your document's ready to send on. And then should it be a document that needs to be executed, Create also integrates with DocuSign so you can easily log into your account and arrange for that document to be sent on and um, executed by your clients or indeed by the um, other side. So it's a very quick overview. We only have a few minutes today, unfortunately, um, to show you Create, but we would really like to invite you to provide us with any feedback or ideas um, for developments in this um, product. If you wish to do so, you are free to contact any of the LexisNexis team. My name is Lindsay O'Connor. I'm at lindsay.oconnor at lexisnexis.co.nz, and I'm very happy for you to um, contact me directly with any feedback. We are also looking for beta testers within market. So if that's something that you think you might be interested in and you have an existing um, relationship manager at LexisNexis, please do reach out to them and that may be something that we are able to facilitate for you. And in the interest of time, Sophie, I will hand back to you to close out with one minute to go before we're due to finish. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, I hope that was useful for people to see. So. Uh, it is almost time for us to wrap up now, but um, before I do, I'd like to invite um, our attendees to sign up to the innovation panel if you haven't already done so to join us in continuing the conversation about the future of law in Aotearoa. Uh, you can join without committing to anything apart from receiving relevant innovation activity innovation, uh, invitations. So you can sign up at the link um, that's shown there on the screen and it's also, I believe, going to be put in the uh, chat box as well. Um, again, uh, just to echo what Lindsay said, please do feel free to email either Lindsay or myself, um, sophie.marsh at lexisnexis.co.nz if you have any comments or questions following today's session. So uh, all that remains is to thank you all for joining us um, and to send a particularly big thanks to our fantastic panel members um, for their time and for uh, generously sharing their experience and their insights with, with us. So thank you so much. Um, nā mihi nui a koutou and mā te wā, goodbye for now and everyone have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Ka kite. <laughs>